there is a legendary Scion player, a challenger for six years in a row, someone who is really not afraid to change the meta. No, it's not Baus. This is Tiltarella, the OCE Scion King. And in season 13, with Teleport Smite Scion, he is completely changing the support meta. This is an invading strategy where his goal is to completely ruin the enemy jungler's day, smiting away their camps, upgrading his own jungle item, and not even going bot lane. The last time I saw something this insane was Smite Janna top lane, and we all know how that ended, so I think it's about time to cause some more chaos. With this new pick also having a gold generation exploit to get him ahead. In fact, this strategy even got Tiltarilla banned, then unbanned, and an official apology. More on that later. First, let's get right into how this pick works. Just after a word from our sponsor, Scion also has some incredible skins, and we're to been adding some great ones to the game recently, but they're definitely not cheap. Even up to $20 per skin. But I do have a solution for you to get any league skin you want just by playing League of Legends tournaments using Z League. Z League is a league tournament website where you get matched with players in your own rank, play any role, and can even win cash prizes while doing it. It's a really fair system. All you need to do is join a tournament on the website and then queue up for a league game in your client. Which, let's be honest, we're all going to do anyway. So you might as well get rewarded for doing it. It works for solo queue normal games, even ARAMs. So whether you're ranking up in preseason, playing normal games to learn about all the new changes, or a retired league player who only plays ARAMs, it's open for everyone. Sign up for Z League now using my link in the description and get 500 free credits to use. Join your first free tournament and start winning, and then you can finally afford the skin you've always wanted. Now, back to Tiltarilla's game plan. In Champ Select, he explains his strategy to his teammates. Nothing too complex, just telling his team he wants to invade at level 1. Running out of base, he pings the spot he wants to go to in the enemy jungle. He always aims to invade the side opposite the enemy jungler. You'll see why in a second. He starts sweeper and activates it as soon as he gets into the enemy jungle, making sure they're not walking over any wards. Then he pings for his teammates to ward the buff. This is so he can know where the enemy jungler will be starting. If he sees them on the ward, he knows they're starting on this blue. If not, then he knows they're starting on their red. He can also see if enemies ward this buff, which isn't ideal. Sion would love to sweep this ward, but instead his best option is to ping it, and the new system will track the timer so he knows when it's going to run out. Sion then sneaks into the wolf camp using the blast cone. He has started jungle item to kill it faster and has now taken one camp away from the enemy jungler. He then moves on to Gromp, taking a second camp away with very little risk. The enemy jungler is starting to catch on and comes over to his blue buff, which Sion easily predicts. Using Q from Fog of War, Sion still has his smite up. Meanwhile, Udyr doesn't because he wasn't aware of the invade. So he walks in, smites it and steals a third camp. Running away, he's tanky enough to kite out of the jungle. Tiltarella escapes, but not before setting up a first blood on the tilted enemy jungler. Right away, he then goes to bottom crab, letting his team secure double crab while his jungler gets the top one. It's not actually about Sion getting the gold. Tiltarella's whole goal is to help create a jungle gap and use that jungle gap to win the game. The enemy jungler only got three camps. Meanwhile, his jungler was allowed to full clear, getting all six. This gives him an XP and gold advantage, already having a 1.2k gold lead. Sion's passive is also really valuable early game, pretty much having the power of a second champion when you die, with buffed attack speed. Sion can steal camps with passive to deny them, suiciding to tower to activate it, or even use it to trade his life with enemies, as it's really impossible to beat in a melee range fight early on, due to how much DPS the zombie form can do. Sion gets two kills here, the enemy jungler is still level 1 at 3 minutes into the game, meanwhile Sion's jungler gets the chance to steal the rest of their camps. The jungle gap is already so huge. Basing to buy Sheen, a really good component for Sion, he also takes teleport along with his smite to get right back to bot lane and help his AD carry. Sion's been invading this whole time, so he unexpectedly walks into bot lane for an easy double kill. Enemies won't expect this early damage and CC. But there is one big problem. What about his AD carry? Left alone in bot lane 1 versus 2 early on, what can they do? Well, Tiltarella calls this weak siding his bot lane. This is a common term for something that happens with top lane a lot of the time, where the jungler ditches top and leaves them to survive in a 1 versus 2, with their goal being to win the game elsewhere while your top laner just survives. Tiltarella is clearly a veteran top laner who suffered through this many times, and honestly it's not too bad for your AD carry. The wave will always slow push into them from level 1, as 
as the enemies are hitting it, so his Jin can wait for the wave to reach him and then collect the CS. Also getting bonus XP since it's a 1 versus 2. It's really really hard to dive in AD carry this early on if you only have two people. This is because bot lane champions are so squishy, and they may end up accidentally giving a kill. Since Sion is doing all this weird invade stuff, they don't really know where Jin's jungler really is, so going for a fast dive is risky when they could get counter ganked. But why is he doing all of this strategy? What's the point? Well, Tiltarella's belief is that jungle is the most important role in the whole game. If jungle wins, you're likely to win the game. If jungle loses, the game is likely a loss. So all of his focus as support is making this jungle matchup as good as possible for his team. He made it very clear in our interview he is not a second jungler. Sion is not the one who's going to carry. He's not taking camps to get the gold. He's taking the camps to make the enemy jungler weaker. His goal isn't to get fed, it's to make it easier for his carries to get fed. This is why he's never stealing anything from his own jungler. He's looking at their pathing, thinking about what they want to do, sometimes even leashing for them to speed up their clear, but he never denies them any gold. When he has some downtime between camps respawning, Tiltarella knows he can go back to bot lane and get his AD carry fed as well. Thanks to his early game invade, the jungle gap is already getting huge, and his jungler can easily dominate the game, so he's finally able to lane and help out his overleveled AD carry. But the invades are not over, he's always looking for more camps to steal. If he can completely remove the enemy jungler from the game, then their team should have no way to win. There's no time for the enemy jungler to gank, because he's constantly busy dealing with this scion. Instead of fighting your mid and top laner, they're fighting to try and get any camp from their own jungle. With Sion always having two smites ready to go, the enemy can't keep up if he's contesting every camp, so they're forced to concede things to him. If he's able to stay even in farm with the enemy jungler, then he knows he's completely demolishing that game, and meanwhile his jungler can be ganking himself, or joining Sion in the enemy jungle and using Fog of War to get picks. And as I mentioned in Season 13, there is also a new gold generation exploit you can use for this strategy. This is thanks to a new jungling mechanic they added named Treats. If you have a jungle item, every 60 second you get a treat, and then when you kill a camp, one of these treats disappears in exchange for giving you 50 gold. For farming junglers, this mechanic isn't ideal, because they want to be killing loads of camps, not just one every minute. But Sion isn't actually a jungler in this game, he's just stealing camps whenever he can, so he's practically able to always get this bonus 50 gold every time he steals a camp, and this makes this strategy extra efficient. It's almost like Raya added this on purpose to help off meta strategy strategies. The question is, are they that smart? You can really see teleport again being so valuable here, because Sion can commit to these crazy invades, then teleport bot lane whenever he needs to, saving the tower and using his ult to set up more kills. If everything's going well, then later on in the game, Sion is a frontline tank, who still has teleport so he can flank, teleport to fights, and make game-winning macro plays. He also still has smite, doing a minimum of 900 damage before it evolves, so having double smite on your team makes objectives objectives much safer to take. He rarely kills enough camps to fully evolve the smite, because by mid game, his job is mostly done. His jungler should be mega fed, and the enemy jungler should be completely useless, so he doesn't really need the evolve smite, instead focusing on doing his job as a support. But what if these invades fail? For example, the enemy team collapses on him. Well, one of the things that can happen is that you get banned for inting, because this is actually one of the things that happened to Tiltarella. At the end of season 12, he began testing this smite TP scion strategy. With any new strategy, the first first few games are usually bad, but funnily, instead, for him it was practically instant success. After winning 7 games on the pick and only losing 2, his luck turned around a bit and he started to struggle, but then he did start to win more. All this to say, overall it was really positive. One day he logged on again to play some more, having a bad game to start the day off, but thought nothing of it, moving on to the next one and kept playing. Later on it turned out this one single game of the strategy not working was enough for a 14 day ban. Simply he was banned for playing off meta because of this one single game. But this story has a strange twist. As he appealed it, he explained his strategy, and the Riot support person on the other end told him, sorry, our system picked up the wrong game. You weren't actually banned for playing off meta, you were banned because you inted in this other game. So he took a look at this game, and realised it was a game in which his teammate decided they didn't want to play with Sion support. His teammate instead decided to actually troll, locking in Yumi AD carry with Smite. Tiltarella had already locked in as he was first picked. So instead of giving up, he swapped to flash teleport and did his best as an AD carry scion, farming trying to win, ending with some deaths and a bad KDA, but not even as bad as his top laner who had over 10 deaths. Obviously Riot's support was incorrect. 
he shouldn't be banned at all. If anyone should be banned, it's the Yumi, who obviously was really trolling, compared to Tiltarella, who was just practicing a new strategy that he knew worked. Tiltarella told them they made a mistake, Riot reviewed the game, and they ended up unbanning him. And finally, the employee who unbanned him also said they'd be banned themselves a couple of times. Why is this guy on your support staff if he's breaking his own rules? Good question, don't ask me. So in the end, it all worked out. Off meta is safe, and Tiltarella got back to testing the strategy. So back to where we were. In the games where Riot don't ban him, but he's still having a bad early game, what does he do? Well worst case, Tiltarella can teleport back to bot lane, laning as a support like nothing ever happened. His style changes to a normal supportive pick, which still involves lots of killing from bushes and surprising enemies. If it's going really bad, he's likely to sell his jungle item for a support item, as you're not allowed to own both. So even if the invading strategy doesn't work out, he always has this to fall back on. Scion as a normal support is a great pick, with a huge AoE knockup on his Q, and an ult to get big engages. More on Tiltarella in a second, but there is an EU West Scion support player, with a less risky but also very interesting version, Redemption Scion Support. It may sound boring, and I think that's why he wins games with it, because enemies don't expect it to be so good. He rushes this really cheap item right away to get advantages in 2 vs 2s, healing, dealing damage and turning fights around, also being able to use it across the map to win fights without even being there, or even just using it on his other laners to heal up a teammate so they can stay around longer in lane. This player, by the way, is Zotra, who hit Master with this style on Orn support as well. There's even a bug with Redemption, where if you put the centre of it inside a wall, enemies won't be able to see the hitbox at all, but your teammates will, so this means surprise heals can come out of nowhere and turn plays around, with enemies being left confused. Good luck to Riot with that one. Both Zotra Tiltarella and Tiltarella styles meet up in mid-game. Tiltarella is more damage based to still be a carry, and having the smite for objectives. Zotra is a full-on enchanter tank supporting and frontlining for his team. We all know their team fights are going to be good, it's a tank with lots of CC, so instead let's talk about how good these picks are. Tiltarella's invading scion really reminds me of Smite Janna Top, but instead of being an uninteractive buff stealer and roaming laner, invading scion is all about fun skirmishes, outplaying the enemies, and outthinking the enemy jungler. I think it takes a lot more skill and is way more interesting. I love the idea of something like this being in the game, and I really think it's actually good. Just think about playing jungle against this guy. Every time you go into your jungle to farm, half of it is already gone. You don't even stand a chance of winning the jungle matchup. It would be so tilting. And anyway, it's not completely new. We already have permanently roaming supports. It's already an accepted thing in the meta, and it's really strong. So why not add jungling to their skill set? Stealing camps is much more consistent than trying to kill an enemy laner, as the wolves aren't able to flash away from you and ruin your roam. Normal scion support, with or without redemption, is pretty standard. A tanky support with good playmaking. I'd say he's harder than most tank supports, since he has no real dashes, but with it comes a much better ultimate for engages, and lots of options to outplay people with vision. Here is Tiltarella's Season 13 Scion build, starting with a jungle item. He goes for the blue egg, as movement speed on Scion makes him a lot easier to play. First item Sheen, for the big power spike for fights, and for stealing camps easier, which now builds into Iceborne Gauntlet, which is practically the same item that was in the game a couple of years ago. I'm really glad it's back. Titanic Hydra is his next choice for the damage, being a real threat in fights. After that, going full tank to fit the game, as well as getting synergy with the Titanic. Zotra's build is similar, but with steel shoulder guards to start, then his classic redemption. One very underrated item on support is Radiant Virtue, one of the new ones. When you ult, you gain max HP, and give you and your nearby allies ability haste, and healing for everyone, which applies every 3 seconds. Great for any tank. Both players love this Glacial Augment page for the extra utility. Tiltarellas is best for early fights since he's invading a lot, whereas Zotras is more based on cooldown reduction, so he can chill until he gets his redemption. Please check out Tiltarella on YouTube. I've watched him for years and I love the guy. He even uses Z-League, the sponsor of this video, and link to their tournaments is in the description. He and Zotra also both have Twitch channels so you can see them both live, inventing new strategies. Links below, and thanks so much for watching.